Hello people and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. I'm RDF. Today's video, we have a fantastic defensive tactic. It's a 4411, but it's got two DMs and it will grab you plenty, plenty of clean sheets. The tactic was created by Moray's boss over on FM Base, as you can see on the screen right now. It does have a little description and we will go through it very briefly. But before we get stuck into this video, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel to get the latest Football Manager content. Also, if you like this video, watch it and then press that like button. And if you have any tactic recommendations, make sure to leave those in the comments. But now, let's get started. So as we already discovered, it's a 4-4-1-1 with two defensive midfielders. And this tactic style of play is focused on counter-attacking quickly and having a very solid defensive core. For me, the defensive part of this tactic was very impressive. This tactic was tested with three different teams, Manchester United, Aston Villa and Borussia Mönchengladbach over in the Bundesliga. The tactic is successful when it comes to winning trophies, I can also vouch for that, and it works for elite teams as well as underdogs. He originally tested it with two clubs, Liverpool and Aston Villa, and the tactic worked very well for them. Five titles with Liverpool and the FA Cup and third place with Aston Villa, and in that case, the tactic did overperform. Once you click the link on the website below, you can see the results that he achieved as well. So make sure you click that link anyway to download the tactic. But the tactic is a 4-4-1-1 which utilises a pair of defensive midfielders, a deep line playmaker and a defensive midfielder sitting ahead of the two centre-backs. The attacking focus is down the wings by using a pair of overlapping athletic wing-backs who get up and down the flanks. A pair of inverted wingers which they sit narrower and they will provide both width and attacking prowess by cutting inside assisting the attacks. The advance forward of course will score you a lot of goals. So he tested it with Aston Villa, I'm going to test it with Aston Villa to see how well I do. He tested it with Liverpool but I am going to test it with Manchester United and as a random test I also tested it with Bruce Young watching Gladbach. So now let's look at the tactic. So here's the tactic, it's a 4-4-1-1, of course it is, it's a counter-attacking tactic and in goal we do have the sweeper keeper on the defend duty, he has no added instructions. The two wingbacks on the support duty, they both have take more risk, cross from the byline and stay wider. In central defence we have one ball playing defender and we have one central defender. For me personally that provides great balance in your central defence, especially when it comes to building up and ball distribution. For the midfield pivot, we have one defensive midfielder, he's on the support duty, he's instructed to shoot less often, hold his position, close down more, tackle harder and mark tighter. His midfield partner, the deep line playmaker, he's instructed to dribble less, close down more and tackle harder. The two inverted wingers on the attack duty, they are instructed to sit narrower and tackle harder, whilst the advanced playmaker in the attacking midfield position, he's instructed to hold up the ball, move into the channels and tackle harder. With him holding up the ball, that can be interesting because if he does hold up the ball, that may allow the two inverted wingers to come inside and overlap that advanced playmaker. So in theory, that could be a very good instruction for this system. And up top, we have our goal scorer, the advanced forward, and he has no added instructions. Now for the team instructions, the mentality is set to balanced, which probably saves this tactic from being an offensive one. But the attacking width is set to narrow so the tactic will channel its play through the central areas. For the approach play there's overlap down the left and overlap down the right alongside play out from the defence. The passing directness is set to shorter with the tempo set to higher. In the final third there is low crosses with work the ball into the box and also run at the defence. When this tactic is in transition, when the possession has been lost, the tactic will counter press. And because the tactic is based around counter attacking, when the possession has been won, the tactic will then make its counter movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession, the goalkeeper will distribute it quickly and he will distribute it to the fullbacks. For out of possession, the defensive shape, we are using the offside trap but with a standard defence line and a higher line of engagement. The defensive width, we are going to force the opposition on the outside. The marking and tackling, we are using tighter marking. The pressing intensity is set to more urgent. We are preventing the short goalkeeper distribution alongside get stuck in. 
So, as we can see quite clearly, this tactic is set up to be a counter-attacking tactic. It's not very aggressive, it's not very in your face. I know usually we like to share football manager tactics with the high line of engagement, the high defence line, the present intensity all the way up and the mentality set to more positive or attacking. But that isn't the case for this tactic and those instructions aren't needed to create a successful tactic, as we will see right now, as we will see when we check the results. But before we do, we will check if there are any set pieces set. So, for corners the attacking corners down the right this is what it looks like and for the attacking corners down the left hand side this is what it looks like just in case there are some throwing instructions this is what it looks like for the attacking throw-ins on the right and this is what it looks like for the attacking throw-ins down the left but that's the tactic all wrapped up and all covered we are now going to check the results so, for Manchester United, we did manage to win the league. We played 38, we won 32, we drew 5 and only lost 1, with a goal difference of plus 75 and a points tally of 101 points. In the UEFA Champions League, we beat Liverpool in the final by some luck. We did draw 2-2, but we beat them on penalties. In the Emirates FA Cup, we came runners up to Arsenal, I believe, yet we lost 3-0 in the final. That is fairly disappointing. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the fourth round by Leeds United. For Aston Villa, we did manage to finish 5th, I know the original tester managed to get 3rd place but this time we managed to finish 5th which is still positive, Aston Villa are predicted to finish 19th, we managed to finish 5th and we are now in the Europa. The Emirates FA Cup we got knocked out in the 5th round by Arsenal and in the Carabao Cup we got knocked out in the 3rd round by Brentford but we are now going to check some league statistics. So, for the Premier League, the most goals was Manchester United, we managed to score 90, Aston Villa scored 62. Most points per game, of course, Man United is going to be up there, Aston Villa are 5th. For the most shots for, Manchester United come in 4th, so this is not very attacking, it's not very offensive, which is probably why we don't see Aston Villa on this list also. But it's very good defensively and we can see that with the shots against. Manchester United came in 2nd and Aston Villa came in 5th. For the best pass completion, Manchester United managed to make the list in 6th place with 88% pass completion rate. And for the most possession, well, we didn't have the best average possession. For the most tackles won, Manchester United came in 2nd, Aston Villa came in 5th. For the most dribbles made, Manchester United came in 4th, Aston Villa coming in 7th. For the most clean sheets, and this is the most impressive part for me personally, because it's a more defensive minded tactic. It's a counter tactic, we are sitting deeper than usual and looking to hit teams on the break. So for the clean sheets, Manchester United 25 clean sheets and Aston Villa come in 4th which is very impressive, beating the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea with 17 clean sheets. For the player statistics for the most goals, we can see Anthony Martial scored 27 Premier League goals, Oli Watkins coming in 7th with 15. For the most assists, Alex Tellers, Bruno Fernandes and Juan Mata all on 11, all joint 5th. For the most shots, Anthony Martial's there, Oli Watkins. For the most player of the match awards, Anthony Martial, Jack Grealish is on the list and also Alex Tellers. For the most key passes, Bruno Fernandes, the advanced playmaker. For the pass completion, Harry Maguire there, Victor Lindelof is there but that's not really important. Most tackles made, Marcus Rashford and Daniel James surprisingly. But for the fewest conceded, David De Gea there with 15 goals, only 15 conceded and Emiliano Martinez with 29. But we also did test this with Borussia Mönchengladbach on a different save so we are now going to load that up and check how well they did. So, Borussia Mönchengladbach, they came in second. They are predicted to finish sixth, if I believe anyway. Let me go and check that. Oh, predicted to finish fifth. I'm sure it's sixth at the beginning of the season. But nonetheless, they did break their expectations coming in second. Playing 34, winning 20, drawing 11 and only losing three, surprisingly. And they have a points tally of 71. In the Champions League, they got knocked out in the first knockout stages by Barcelona and they got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Mainz in the DFB Pokal. In the Bundesliga though, they did score the fourth most goals. They did have a few shots at goal, they came in six, but for the fewest conceded, Borussia Mönchengladbach, again, this tactic is very, very good defensively. Only 19 goals conceded in the Bundesliga. That there is very impressive. We also had the joint most clean sheets with Bayern Munich as well, both getting 19 clean sheets, so very good defensively. Very, very good. So, we're back at Manchester United now and we're just going to quickly check the analyst report and we're also going to see the squad report. We're going to see how well the other players did in the team. 
So for the attacking efficiency, you can see we were aggressive and we were clinical. Aston Villa also is there as we can see as well. For the general performance, we did outperform what was the average in the Premier League, which is kind of no surprise, especially for Manchester United anyway. For the defensive efficiency though, you can see here we work very quiet and impenetrable, but not just Manchester United, the second best team that were quiet and impenetrable was Aston Villa. How did this tactic score most of its goals? 54 from play shots, 8 from powerful shots and 9 from headers. The assist, 25 from through balls, only 12 from crosses, 7 from a short pass, 5 from a free kick, 6 from corners, 7 from the opposition mistake, which is quite impressive. But now we're going to check the squad reports, the top goal scorers, the most assist for Manchester United, and then we are going to close this video. So for Manchester United, Anthony Martial managed to score 41 goals in 45 appearances for Manchester United. Marcus Rashford scored 15 goals. Mason Greenwood got 13 and 15 starts. Bruno Fernandes managed to get 11. We also got Daniel James on 11. So we got a few players on double figures for the goals. For the assist, Juan Mata got 18 in all competitions. Alex Tellers got 17. Bruno Fernandes got 16. And Donny van der Beek managed to get 10. For Aston Villa, the top goal scorer was Oli Watkins. Not so matter, he's not at our club. It was Oli Watkins, 16 goals. Bertrand Traore got 11 and Trezeguet managed to get 10. For the assist and no surprise, Jack Grealish managed to get 12 assists but he also scored 9 goals. So it was also a very good season for Jack Grealish. But that there, unfortunately, wraps up the video. If you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to get the very best football manager tactics. Make sure you have liked this video by now and make sure you leave a comment if you have any tactical recommendations. Which tactic would you like to see next? Make sure you leave that in the comment. I will see you soon. Peace out. Stay safe. See ya.